Well, folks, it is Tuesday today, so here is Trashy Cabinet Tuesday. Where has this radio been? It is so rusty. And look where it's come from. Especially if I can find the right button. It's come all the way from sunny Wales. Yeah. I must look them up on Google. And what's the radio? Well, it is a team, a Jason, sorry, it's a team, Jason Pro 8000. And look, the meat is all dangling inside. Isn't that exciting? And on the back, we have some predictable sockets and we have a label. And what can I see it says on that monitor? It says Kerno. Oh. And then it's got every other screw in that side and it's got every other screw on this side. And this is something which we no doubt have bought on eBay. And we're going to see what there is inside, if anything. And if I can find my remote, we'll pause the video. I've put the lid back on this because I had to let you see me opening the lid and speaker unsoldered. It saves me a task. That's very kind of somebody to sell me a radio with the speaker unsoldered. Save me some time. Oh, well. Of course, I've got some memory like a sieve, so I wouldn't recognise it if I've seen one yesterday. So, we've got an output transistor that's been replaced. We've got a driver transistor that's been replaced. So, it's certainly seen working, it's seen some work around there as well. Oh, yes, it's. Uh, had a new wire to go from there to the aerial. Is that how it's supposed to be? And and look, it's got a it's got a dangling capacitor. A capacitor there that dangles. Hmm. Oh, it's one of these with the three crystal synthesizer. <laughs> oh, aren't they fun to set up? Oh, I should have put it back on the shelf. Okay. It's got auto squelch, tone high and low, PA, on a volume squelch, mic gain, and RF gain, which is was very stiff and is now not so stiff so we need to address that meter at some oh it's just um, yeah it's just kind of glued into position in this kind of falling out okay well we better find a power lead and we better find ourselves a mic I had a bit of a think and I thought I've seen something as oddball as this before. So I've just drawn this out and the microphone pin out with the ident at the top and the pins facing you. Ground, receive, transmit, audio, which looks to be like the same as Uniden. But I had a, a think and I thought Team Lancaster. And it's got similarities. We've got transmit line up there we've got receive there so kind of this side of the board is the same but when it comes to synthesizer it's different so that's the team Lancaster on one side but some of those presets might be the same function so now we've got ourselves a microphone I rewired sounds a bit strangled okay so, I'll go into transmit, 
and it's certainly doing more than three watts. So I'll put the other camera on and let's see what it's doing. So the first thing we need to do is to set the 10.24 master oscillator for the synthesizer, which is the Motorola MC1450. One four five one zero six. So it's pin three. Looking at the data sheet for the chip, and my leads only just reach to that frequency counter. So we're looking at doing this first crystal here. So I'm going to put the probe on pin three. Ten point two three nine whatever. Hopefully, bring that up to 10.24. It's not going to go, is it? So ideally, we change the crystal and um, and and make that ten point two four. But in reality, we're going to compensate the transmit. We can get right. That's not a problem. The receive won't be off frequency, but its IF could be lopsided. So instead of ten point six nine five, it could end up as ten point six nine three or something like that. But in reality, it's not going to make much difference. But that's the first thing we needed to set. So the next thing we need to set while we're at it, while we've got that camera on, is we may as well set the transmit frequency. And I don't know whether we're talking about this crystal here or that crystal there. So I'm just going to have to find out, aren't I? So we'll switch that back to there. So we should be 27,791. 27,791,25. Just switch that to a slower gate time so we've got more accuracy. 27.79123. I mean, it's spot on. So, I'm going to adjust this first crystal, whichever it is. And that is not affecting it. So, it must be the upper crystal. Twenty-seven I've gone the wrong way. Like I usually do. No, still the wrong way. There we go, twenty seven seven nine one two six, that'll do nicely. Okay, so switch to camera two from camera three, and let's go through the transmit. We'll have to come back to the uh, lower crystal. So then I'll just make these notes. So that's 10.24. That's TX, so that will be RX. So that's not that sussed. I can't find anything on this. I searched the internet, and there's the odd person with the odd set, and it's got the same front to a, a German uh, Kerno, not Kerno, but um, Kaiser set, but it's totally different in sides. I looked at some pictures, so the nearest I can see is this Team Lancaster, but this bit is different. So transmit let's see what we've got we have got three watts so see if we can get a bit more out of it and get a bit less I mean, we can see it's been messed about with we can see it's had new 
transistors and things. We're still at three watts and that leaves us with the coil just there. So I'm going to go through those a few times and see what we can achieve. Okay, so we've managed to get about three and a half watts out of it. I'm going to move on to deviation and Uh, and I've lost the little uh, oscillator that we use. Unfortunately, I can't see where it's run. Oh, it's there. <sighs> but we're going to have to whistle our way through this one. So, looking at the notes I made for the Lancaster, I think this is where we might be able to have a bit of help without aimlessly twiddling this set. And I reckon the deviation on that one... Don't tell me I didn't label it. No, I didn't. Okay, well, I've got RF meter, squelch, TX meter, so that must be deviation. No, it's not. I think it's that with a dirty pot. That's quiet. <whistles> Wallow. <whistles> it's not very sensitive, this. Checks mark gains on full, which it isn't. <whistles> With mark gain on full, it's still not sensitive. Let's try it at that. Wallow. Should be all right. So we will add to our notes that RV4 is deviation. Going back to power. Three and a half watts. And let's see what the meter says. Oh, it doesn't say anything because it's it's all mangled up. So we'll better look into unmangling the meter. Oh dear. So what's happened? Just take that camera off. The front snapped off, so, and the the writing on the meter is on a slip of of uh, plastic that goes between these guide rails. So, without bending the actual needle, I've got to slot that back in, which I've now done. So, somehow, we've got to recover the broken bit of meter and kind of glue it together. So I'll take the front off and we'll stop the video at that point and come back when that's sorted. Right, so we've put the meter back together 
basically it was scotch tape very carefully applied and we'll plug the mic back in and we'll see if we can set up that RF meter which is where we've got to well, I can hear it banging across and I think it's the preset there Is. Now, I would like it in the centre of the zone, but it, it won't go down that low. So, helps if you can see what I'm talking about. Let the, let unkey, re-key, can we see that? It's a bit higher than I would like. So, that covers transmit. So, we'll get onto the receive. So we're going to need to put this on frequency. I don't think there's any earth on my speaker. It sounds awful. So we want 2779125 on the signal generator for channel 20. And I'm going to do this a bit of a topsy-turvy way round because I want to set the receiver and all that before I actually put it onto frequency. So I have a very low volume, that's full volume. I've got the correct frequency on my signal generator and what I'm just going to do is we know that I'll just make a note that we that was uh, TX meter. Yes, we've done deviation, we've done TX meter. So we know that this trimmer is received. Now, because I disturbed that in looking for the correct frequency for the transmit, I'm just going to turn this for the best sound. And that's what I've got. So it's, it's going to be pretty close at that. We'll get the marker oscillator out later and set it exactly. So, as I say, that's full volume. So the detector surely must be miles out. And the detector looks to me like it's going to be this coil here. Yeah. Turn this. I don't, know. I don't know why we've got a horrible sounding. Oh, got a wire off from the test connector, that's why. So, pause the video while I mend the test equipment. Okay, so it wasn't the radio at all with low volume, it was my test equipment. So, we'll now set that detector. It was wet way out, but. Um, there we go, that's now set. So I'll move the, uh, I'll put the bench light back on and we'll move on to the synod meter. And so, we'll start, we're at S9 at the moment, we'll drop that. Three microvolts, one microvolt. So we'll start with T102, T102B, T213 is what it looks like to me. Sound of the meter not switched on. Wow, that made all the difference, didn't it? 
Let's see if we can go down another range. No, not quite. So I'll, I'll look at that one, which is T1, I think. And drop the machine down a bit more. There we go. I'll go through those again. Because they are interactive. Do you know what made me think of the Team Lancaster? It was exactly the same rusty case. Oh, okay, let's look at these IFs. Yep. Drop it down a bit more. Go through those again. I'm going to do all that again because it's not as good as I would like. Okay, I think that's just what, what all we're going to get. So that's 0 0.3 of a microvolt. 0 0.25, 0 0.2. So, not the most sensitive one in the world, but then it's on about it's on a par with about the sensitivity of the Uniden uh, 100 and 200 we had in this country, which are well thought of radios. But there you are. Now let's get this thing on frequency. So we're going to turn the tone off the signal generator. We'll get the marker oscillator out. We'll turn that camera off. We'll prop the marker generator up on the bench. Connect it up. Now, as I've said before, there's two ways of doing the marker oscillator. This is effectively another signal generator. It's intended for business radio in the early 1970s, which were crystal controlled. And it offers 455, 23.455, which I've never come across, and 10.7, which is pretty normal, but no good for CB. So, ideally 10.695, but it doesn't make any difference which IF we're going to inject. It just makes it harder to hear if we use the 455 one, which is what we're going to use. I could also hook up a lead to the other signal generator on the bench behind me, but I really can't be bothered, and we'll do it with the marker oscillator. So what we need to now do is connect this to something or other. I had a really good crocodile clip to put in this in the day. No, it's not there. Oh, I know, we'll use the uh, BNC lead, for it, which we've just been using on there. And all we need to do is to waggle this in the vicinity of the, it's called loose coupling. Now, can you hear that musical note? I'll turn it off again. On. 
So we have to try and make that null. So we know the lower ones receive. And we know the tool doesn't fit properly for some reason. So I have to just pull the little end out a bit. So we know that's now on frequency. I'm just going to trim the signal generator. Yep. That's it. We're done. So if I move the signal generator, the note will come back. So 7905. So I'll just put the camera on there. So the signal generator is 79125. The marker oscillator is on 455. And uh, we've got zero beat note, so the receiver is on frequency. So if you remember, we couldn't quite get 10.24. It was something like 10.2395. Uh, yeah, it just a tiny bit out. And all that means is that the IF, intermediate frequency, could be slightly wop, uh, lopsided. I couldn't say that, could I? I think it's wopsided, as if I can't say my R's. So, there we have it. That's uh, That should be fine. But it's a faff, isn't it? You know, you've got the 10.24, you've got the transmit one, you've got the receive one. So next, we'll put S9 on it, put the tone back on, and let's see what the meter says. It says three. Well, that could be because I've been fiddling with the presets. I think it's that one. It is. Whoa! I wasn't expecting that. It won't go any higher. How, how rubbish is that? Okay, well, we'll put that to one side and we'll set the squelch. So, squelch to threshold, signal generator back on, and when does it come in? Comes in at 30 microns, that's rubbish. So we need to back off the squelch preset. Or is that the squelch preset? You see, this is what can happen. We don't know. I think that's squelch. Hmm. It's now stronger, so that's that figures. that's minimum right we'll try that test again signal generator off threshold signal generator on 3 microvolts 10 microvolts not brilliant at all so it's coming in or going off at it's going off at seven and a half microvolts and it's coming in at nine. So it doesn't impress me. Let's go to S9. So that's definitely the highest we can get that meter. Of course, that meter could have been damaged with it being dangling inside. So I'm not bothered about that. It's my set. Uh, it's not like it's going anywhere. But we can now say that that is squelch and that is RX meter.
Do you know what? We never got... Did we get to the bottom of this one? Oh, yes, that was... No, we didn't. never got to the bottom of that preset. Now, this radio's got a preset squelch. So, I'm just going to switch that on. So, we'll turn the signal generator off. We'll turn that squelch down. And switch auto squelch on. And we'll see when that comes in. One, three, ten, thirty, hundred. Comes in at S9. So I wonder if this preset affects the auto squelch, which will be preset. Yeah, it does. So we'll have that more sensitive. Signal drones are on. So that is now more sensitive and coming in at uh, 30 microvolts ish. We'll go to manual squelch and we'll see whether that's affected manual squelch. So we'll set the threshold again. Signal generator on. One microvolt, three microvolts, ten microvolts. So off at six and a half on at eight and a half so it hasn't made any improvement so it's quite a insensitive tank kind of squelch arrangement so i'm just going to go through the receiver one more time off camera just to make sure it's absolutely peak okay yes definitely that's as good as it gets so the radio is doing uh, it's just doing a shade away from four watts about 3.8 from cold uh, all radios as they um, as they've been transmitted for some time they do drop down in power so it was three and a half when we tuned it but it's about 3.8 3.9 when it's actually um, sat there we've got a meter here that I would like to drop down for the transmit it's too high but a receive on receive it's as lazy as they come so that should be s9 and nine is where i'd want 10 to be and yeah i mean it'll go to nearly full but whether or not the meter has been affected by being bashed around like that uh, is anybody's guess but it did read proper deflection on transmitters you can see so well i mean it's not the highest quality set is it it's uh, even if it is called the pro version and i don't recall the team lancaster being any brilliant radio either. Anyway, we'll do an on-the-air test. I will just plug it into the aerial and we'll just pause the video. Okay, so we're on the aerial now. It's put back together and I've put self-tappers, uh, sorry, I've put machine screws in because two of the four screws that came out were self-tappers and two were machine screws. So I've run through them with a three millimeter tap and uh, it, the case now fits properly. So, we'll have a quick uh, flick round. SSB rubbish, which it shouldn't even be up, up here. Nineteen, Roger. Okay, well we'll do a little test with Mr. Chippy, and there we go. I mean, the sensitivity isn't as good as some sets, but it's on a par with the well thought of um, Unit N two hundred, Unit N one hundred, and the squelch is insensitive. So that's my findings so uh, quite an unusual one and that's what probably makes this slightly more interesting than 
doing a York 861. I don't think I've ever done a York 861 on video. So uh, thank you for watching.